Okay, good afternoon, afternoon all together, or let's better say hello because it's not a good day in Europe, as you may know. Um, but I really appreciate that so much people are here and are willing to talk about accessibility at uh, OpenCast. Accessibility was, uh, yeah, always um, a focus on uh, OpenCast, as you may know, Heidi or Judy, Allison, we, work, we uh, worked together on some accessibility features in the past. I think that's the place where I can introduce myself. I was at the first OpenCast uh, yeah, involved, take then a break about 10 years, and I'm now back at the OpenCast project. Great to see so much uh, people that I know, I just know but also to see so much new people. Um, OpenCast um, is a lecture recording system for students and it should be for all students. So accessibility um, should be a core feature. And I like to thank Olaf for um, getting things started and getting things uh, ongoing. Um, in the accessibility uh, region. So I just like to uh, yeah, see this not as presentation, but as coming together of different people that are willing and interested in accessibility. So please jump in in case you have to say something, you have uh, yeah, some suggestions or some um, questions. Um, first, I'd like to uh, we say about the current state of um, accessibility in OpenCast and what is currently done and is planned to do in the future. I will focus on the user-facing components at the moment. That means the uh, player, studio, um, and other tools, and we go through this. Um, the first one is the contribution from ETH. And uh, we have there um, a lot of ongoing Olaf has initiated. So I'd like to pass over to Olaf in case he, um, he want to say something to that. And um, he has initiated um, some usability testings of different parts. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Okay. Thanks, Clemens. Uh, yes, uh, as some of you will know, we have a larger program ongoing at ETH, which is dedicated to accessibility in, in many respects. Uh, and obviously, the one I'm talking about is related to OpenCast in particular. And uh, I will talk about things that have been happening and, and will be happening throughout the next couple of months. So first of all, let me mention uh, something that is not on the slides here, but uh, might be of interest to, to those um, interested in accessibility. And that's the fact that we had uh, the uh, uh, university here in, in Zurich make a comparison of transcription services. Some of you might, might remember that uh, report I published in parts. And um, while I was hoping for uh, the uh, author of that report to present here at ETH, I wasn't able to, to make him do that uh, due to uh, time restrictions. Um, but we will see to him uh, presenting the details of that study at a later adopters meeting, either in April or May, not yet certain, just for those uh, who are waiting for results from that study or would like to raise questions regarding that study. Now, the stuff that uh, Clemens is uh, referring to uh, is something that, that we have planned for, for this year especially. And the first step was that we made that uh, Zurich University uh, who have a focus on accessibility in IT analyze Paella player. So they took the uh, latest version of Paella Player, I think it was a, an early seven version, uh, and analyzed it with respect to uh, different features regarding accessibility. And uh, they found some, some issues, obviously, uh, that uh, Carlos will be looking at and is looking at together with his colleagues from uh, Valencia as we speak. So these are the 
improvements that Clemens mentions on his slides and we hope to have first results uh, within the next couple of weeks or months. And there will be, uh, if uh, they are implemented, these improvements, uh, a second review later this year in order to then confirm that uh, Paella Player is accessible due to uh, the um, stipulations that we have here at ETH, but these are general stipulations which I presume will also apply to other universities. Now, given the fact that uh, the Paella Player might be the, the, the first and foremost uh, module of, of OpenCast that, that users see, it is not the only one they see uh, in the future or in present also. Uh, people interact with uh, Studio as well, and the editor uh, presented by, by Arne here today in, in, uh, in a um, modified way as a subtitle ed editor also. And these two modules also will be reviewed by the Zurich uh, University I mentioned um, with respect to accessibility. And again, this report will then go to developers in order to improve those aspects that uh, the uh, Zurich University's uh, analysis says are not adequate for, for um, accessibility. Now, <clears throat> this all comes together in, in uh, another project that, that we have uh, started quite a while ago here at ETH, which is the, the new video portal uh, named Tubira. And um, given the fact that we will see a first implementation of that video portal later this year at the University of Bern and the pilot here at uh, ATR Zurich, we will then uh, analyze uh, these tools together in the context of that video portal. So the video portal itself will also be analyzed when it comes to accessibility. And uh, we assume that this in, in conjunction will then let us know that uh, OpenCast, at least when it comes to the user-facing end, uh, is, is sort of accessible in the way that you could expect higher education institutions to use such a tool in 2022 or early in 2023. I think that's the um, time frame we, we have in mind. And we hope to achieve that uh, with the measures I just outlined. And with that, it's over to you, Clemens. Okay, thanks, Olaf. Um, I have to switch the slides here. So, um, due to a grant from State of Lower Saxony, we um, have also resources at Elan, the University of Osnabrück, to spend some developer hours um, in the developing of um, the parts you can see here. So um, we can bring um, accessibility forward a bit. And as Olaf mentioned before, um, Valencia is also uh, getting some, some funding to uh, from the ETH, I think, uh, to uh, make the Paella player more accessible than it is at the moment. So in case you know the old Theodore player, there were some accessibility features, especially keyboard shortcuts, and you could uh, navigate uh, through tapping to the player and interact with the player. Um, this is a bit difficult with the current Paella player. So our first goal would be, uh, together with this Valencia, that we took these features from the old, let's say, player, because it's duplicated um, to the new player. And this is the uh, yeah, more practical, the first um, yeah, issue we would like to tackle, and also the fundings, the, the foundings of the um, accessibility report will have mentioned. So here's the Paella player in case you uh, don't know it. Um, and the second or the next thing is um, Pira the portal. And I like to hand over to Lucas. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, um, Thanks. Uh, so Clemens asked me to briefly talk about the accessibility features of Tobira and uh, Studio as well as the editor next. Um, 
Payments, I cannot control the slides. If you could click next once or twice. Oh, that's... I've made you the presenter. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, Tobira, we will hear about Tobira more on Thursday, I believe. Um, but this is the current state of it. And in regards to accessibility, um, I would describe it as okay, but I'm, <laughs> I cannot really judge it. So I think we need a proper report on that. So main navigational elements of Tobira can be controlled with keyboard. This is one feature that we recently implemented basically. So the basic functionality is, is usable with only keyboard. Uh, this means you can also watch videos with some uh, restrictions. Uh, as you might know, Tobira uses two different video players, um, depending on how many video streams are in the event. For single stream video events, which actually are most of the events, um, we use a player called I, I don't know how to pronounce it, P-L-Y-R. I guess it's just pronounced player. Um, and that player is um, is quite accessible. And uh, you can also use it completely with keyboard. And I heard it's really good in the accessibility domain. Um, for dual, dual stream videos, of course, we use Paya player. And you already heard about the problems with accessibility for Paya. So we are also waiting for Paya to fix those issues. And then this will also get fixed in Tobira, of course. Um, it might be worth mentioning, though, that in Tobira, we plan on adding global shortcut, uh, keyboard short shortcuts for some basic features like start and stop the video. And these would be global and would not be controlled by the player. So we could. Um, improve the accessibility also of Paya by adding those shortcuts, but um, some things just need to be fixed in Paya itself, like the tab order and uh, focus indicators and stuff like that. Uh, in general, Tobira is still in development, um, so the accessibility stuff is also certainly still in progress and there's still a lot to improve. Jumping to the next project then. This is Opencast Studio, um, but I'm sure most of you have seen it already. And in regards to accessibility, um, the story is not as, as, as bright as with Tabira. Um, Opencast Studio is not very accessible, I think. Um, this just comes down to, it was most mostly developed is not the correct term, but the last big development happened right when COVID started and everyone had way too much stuff on their minds. And I quickly had to implement lots of features in Opera Studio and fix the most problematic issues. So in that time, um, we didn't have any time to implement accessibility features. And to be clear, at that time, I also didn't know anything about accessibility. So yeah, Opera Studio is in a, a quite a bit and uh, quite a sad state, I would say. It's, for example, pretty unusable with keyboard. Um, but at least we are aware of those things. And I planned on fixing those for quite some time. Um, we will see when we will actually get to it. But yeah, it's uh, totally planned, as well as some keyboard shortcuts, for example, to um, cut the video afterwards or start and pause the recording that those are our plans, basically. And finally, the Opencast editor. I am not a developer of the editor, but I will <laughs> try to summarize uh, the accessibility features of it anyway, uh, in case there are more questions. Arne is in the chat. So the editor you have seen um, an hour ago, for example, or like this. And accessibility-wise, it's probably the best of the three projects I just um, described. Anna has done a pretty fine job uh, implementing accessibility features. Um, for example, it's very usable with keyboard only. And you can also see which elements are focused and stuff like that. So that's very nice. 
it works with a lot of area labels. And um, yeah, the subtitle editor you already have seen. This is in progress, of course, another big chunk of accessibility, um, not directly related to accessibility of the editor, but providing more accessible content uh, in other areas. Um, but of course, it is also in progress. I think um, we cannot say about any of these tools that the accessibility features of those tools are perfect. So it's always in progress, I guess. And this should be a short a description of the accessibility state of these three tools. Can someone with uh, the rights switch to the next slide, please? <laughs> so we have seen the user-facing components um, from um, OpenCast that we are thinking it is worth to, to tackle this and to go on with accessibility and make them more accessible. Of course, there are a lot of other parts uh, from OpenCast that uh, yeah, could be, could be uh, developed, could be uh, developed on, but uh, the admin UI is um, not so often used. So we think it's uh, worth to um, have a look at the other features and parts first. And uh, not to forget, um, please the next slide in case uh, I have the rights again. Of course, we have talked about the UI only. So um, this is one part of accessibility, but um, especially for video content and for multimedia content, um, the content itself is also a great opportunity to make accessibility um, for this. So in case you have uh, visual impaired people and they cannot read so good um, content on the slides or you have hearing impaired people that can't, could not follow uh, the talk, um, there is a lot of room to um, enlarge accessibility by going to the content. And so one idea would be beside the UI itself from OpenCast to have a look at the content and to make the content more accessible. And one part could there be um, improving the uh, speech things we have talked in the last hour. So in case Rüdiger perhaps will jump in and uh, well, Lars, uh, to say what we have planned there or what our first ideas are here um, to improve not only the UI, but also the, the content and make it more accessible. Uh, <laughs> I can roughly say a few words. So as you know, we worked with VOSC and we see from my point of view, VOSC as a good starting point in um, bringing subtitles to every video, also not in, always maybe in the best quality, but in a hopefully acceptable quality. And I was impressed by seeing what uh, subtitles to go did, and probably um, unlike when we prepared this talk, that would also be worth uh, a look in the future. And um, yeah, with um, this technology, one point is um, that we have to look for how good we integrate. Uh, we are waiting for uh, feedback from the community, how what works for them. And um, we also, with uh, what we do with WASC and the upcoming subtitles editor, are considering ways on how to improve uh, building up um, uh, dictionaries and uh, training models and we've seen from especially the commercial uh, vendors uh, on how they improve uh, try to improve for an um, educational domain and i would hope uh, with uh, our efforts we might even get to a tool where or uh, get our tools that are already existing into a way that we can create these uh, 
donations of uh, samples that have been corrected, for example, um, by users so that all interested parties, not only open source tools, might get better training data. We still have to look for a way where we would put these um, um, donations, uh, this um, training data donations, but that could be one way uh, to continue here. Um, I guess <laughs> that's what I could say at the moment. Um, S3, uh, Matthias, uh, would be an easy option. I'm not looking for a storage solution. I'm looking more for a group who already um, um, uh, prepares uh, or offers this data, stores them, and um, maintains what we have here so that people know where to find them. It's not a storage solution that we are looking for. But uh, we discussed this in the preparation of this talk and our efforts for the just started project so that we do not have something in ha at hand. It was more like common voice or other te um, technologies um, where we wanted to do this. Um, and <laughs> um, maybe S3 and a simple website could be a solution, but I don't think it would be our preferred solution. Um, okay, um, yeah, so much from my side on this. I guess we had a longer a list, but I was not too well prepared at this point. It's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We have also collected some uh, a, a very short list <laughs> about uh, accessibility tests. Um, as mentioned before, Olaf did some tests or uh, gave some to to uh, to the um, applied uh, university in Zurich, and uh, the Humboldt University in Berlin has also uh, did also a short test. So they took some body with a screen reader with chores and uh, yeah, had a look at uh, different parts of OpenCast. So in case you are uh, you have an accessibility group or uh, have access to uh, people that are using. Um, accessibility hardware, um, Zoom, uh, text, some software, uh, screen readers, lectures, or others. Um, they have special needs, and you know them. Please encourage them to test uh, OpenCast, or if you have reports, please uh, let us know about this, because then we can um, incorporate the findings um, in our development. And of course, in case you are willing to, to, do, to develop uh, other things and you say, okay, we have a need there and we have requirements here, please let us know. And in case you yeah, have this now and you want to talk about this, please jump in and uh, let us know about your uh, yeah, accessibility uh, work or activities. I think we have a lot of time to discuss a bit fast, perhaps too fast. But in case you uh, have to uh, contribute something, let us know it. I would start with a simple questions. Are there any other activities going on on certain parts of accessibility in the whole domain that uh, we do not know about, that we should know about? Are you planning something, or is a group you are connected uh, to planning something? I can add something, although that's more of a more future perspective, let's say. As the government of North Australia is continuing to fund all kinds of projects for how to improve the higher education, the digital higher education in the state, one of the projects they're funding is. A project for accessibility, which is then checking all the other uh, funded projects on their accessibility, basically meaning we might get a government-funded audit of our EduCast, which in turn benefits OpenCast. So we might be able to come back to that once they start their work. Great to hear that.
We've also tried to find people with disabilities at the university and um, to uh, yeah support us in uh, case we have new features or um, new accessibility features or the current product. So have you or have you groups at your university? I have seen some uh, activities in Manchester um, that you can uh, yeah speak to and to to provide tests or to to give feedback to a product you have in uh, in use we've seen this at um, the university of uh, california and berkeley that there was a user group um, accessibility user group um, relatively i think easily to uh, to access we don't have such uh, a group in Osnabrück. Do you have this in your at your university, or uh, is there some activity? How it is in Manchester? Are the people from Manchester still there? Yeah. Um, no, we don't have a uh, usability group for the whole of IT. Um, we have one user experience person for the whole of IT. Um, the univet, the, um, the comms and communications people who essentially look after the university website probably have their, may have their own internal uh, accessibility people, but they really don't have access to, access to them. Unfortunately, it's left to um, most of the team supporting software to do best effort um, themselves. And uh, we had we did go for a period, I think, in start of 2021, uh, where we looked at the so the custom tools that we have, where we actually essentially facade some of the uh, admin UI uh, functionality and some of the back end uh, functionality. Uh, we went through a process of that to bring it up to sort of a, a baseline um, uh, accessibility, and we did produce an accessibility document. Um, I don't know. If I'll have a look for that and, and post post that if I can find it. If it's public, I think it's on my podcast. Stop man. That would be great. Off the top of my head. Um, we did do a bit of work on our video portal um, uh, to um, help that as well. Um, but yes, it was sort of minimum effort. Um, and of course, we had to comply with the um, adding uh, transcriptions to all videos. So we previously had this as an optional um, feature that people could request videos and we've that been implemented for quite a while and since uh but we all we then i think it was at september of uh 2020 uh we had to basically turn it on for all lectures as says that and that one this year was everything that was uploaded because we were only uploading at that time uh, that i users were uploading their own content um but with the start of the uh 21 22 semester um we uh, also enable that um, on all recordings and stuff and we're still using google and the other thing is to be noted if you if you play around with google there are different uh levels of transcription quality in google so we were using the the baseline default setting um the stuff that uh i think youtube essentially uses is, is probably something internal but to get close to that you need to use the video for why it's called this video it's just called video um mode and the it costs 100 percent it costs an extra 50 percent more um but there's a significant increase in quality as well over the standard uh transcriptions mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of the process we've been through uh, unfortunately not formalized and it's kind of best effort I was impressed about the DASS group, I think, <laughs> um, because we uh, 
try to have statistics from disabled people, disabled students, and because of privacy and so on, there is not really a reliable statistic we had in the yeah, years ago tried to, to figure out. So it's good to have um, yeah um, institution in the, at the university that you can uh, yeah contact in case you want to have uh, yeah some some information about disabled students. So yeah. this is lacking, I think, here also because the privacy is more than yeah the information. Yeah, I think they, yeah, I think they have to actually agree that the you know if they want podcasting then that then that information is made to the podcasting service yeah. <laughs> we do not identify individual students um, okay. yeah. we have a restricted read-only view into their database and it literally we have a list of courses that have at one or more um that students on so those mm -hmm. courses that, that's uh, then affects that's used to override the opt-out so if that course has a DAS student on, um, they, the opt-out is overridden and recordings are made. Um, and then when people log into the video portal, we essentially send uh, their, their spot ID, their single uh, their unique identifier. We basically say, is this in the list? Okay. Yeah. Very, it's very simple, but very restricted. Yeah. Have any, any further information, access to any further information. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other topic to talk about? I think Maybe uh, one interesting question would be uh, if someone finds out, so if you look around in your universities or institutions and find out that there is a working group and um, you could do something, uh, Clemens, would you be the person to contact to coordinate this? Yeah, would be fine. Um, just to encourage people from uh, the uh, heroes here uh, to speak up, uh, where do you see um, currently at your institutions um, um, the focus of um, accessibility and so on going at the moment? So do you feel a kind of pressure from uh, the um, president or uh, the IT, uh, CIO or um, so of your university to work towards accessibility or is um, currently um, you are still in fine with uh, doing nothing or um, waiting for the tools to fulfill the needs that you might have? I think that's a good question from from Rüdiger because from from our side it it is more an um, observation that we are uh, from a from a official side uh, yeah pressed to to uh, go to accessibility so um, in a normal way let's say it would be that uh, there's a requirement and students uh, say we need this and that feature because I cannot study in case I have not the uh, access to whatever, for example, the podcast uh, audio stream in case um, the lecturer does not uh, allow it. So um, I have the, I'm under the impression that it's, it's more an official thing that people say and the, uh, yeah, the official people at the university say we have to do more about accessibility. Um, but have you heard about uh, accessible students that came to you at your help desk and have asked about features? So it seems not the case. <laughs> and we have to go on with the, yeah, official 
Hey, when, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, indeed, there were some feedback when we changed uh, from Teodul to Paella player. Uh, a lot of people noticed that uh, accessibility was worse than in uh, and then Teodul player when we did that switch. Yeah, I've talked uh, about this with Lars, and uh, he said that a lot of people um, um, appreciated the Paella player and. Uh, said oh it's a, it's the, the better player or it's it's uh, really nice and uh, all want to have it so uh, yeah it's but it's it's good to hear that the features um, that are in the old in the duplicated players are in um, yeah also useful and we it's a good idea to take it over to the player player Okay, in case there is there is no more discussion needed, I like to pass over to Rüdiger and to make room for the next presentation. Yes, we still have eight minutes to go for that, so um, I can to our subjects only say, um, like uh, Thomas already pointed out, uh, when EmberScript uh, came to the Opcast community. Um, there was, I guess, an IBM Watson uh, thing going on, and um, that was it. And at the moment, we have multiple integrations with uh, different systems. And as I always point out at the moment, I guess that VOSC and maybe subtitle to go in the future is a game changer in um, not making it complicated by uh, discussing at your university where to get the budget for the subtitles and so, and so on and improving in a baseline level what we can do now. And I would also hope that with all the other tools like screen reader support and so on, we uh, manage uh, year by year now to increase the baseline and to offer more uh, premium sounds like you have to really pay for it. In some cases you have like subtitles, but uh, offer more premium services also that m would make life easier. And um, mm -hmm. I mentioned <laughs> uh, before we started the conference in the chatting uh, that we are also really interested into uh, big blue button integrations of live captions and the colleagues from Subtitle Co also pointed forward on what they are doing. I see as a non-disabled uh, person uh, my real benefits in being able to mute down my video conference and simply watch what people are writing um, and uh, catch up if um, something is happening. And looking at Opencast, it would be more or less the same that um, by being able to index a whole lecture and the text of it, I can, as a student, uh, identify um, keywords that I would like to look for and um, uh, yeah, find the right time and look at uh, what I'm currently interested in preparing for my exam and so on um, uh, just in time and not scan uh, 25 hours of content yeah. only for a certain uh, event. And I am also curious in, with all this additional textual data, what uh, people come up with ideas in the future for data mining in this area. Um, so um, if we, for example, could automatically um, recommend better uh, what we are doing. Um, uh, so if we have open educational resources, for example, um, and uh, simply by getting all the captions and indexing them uh, to um, yeah, better recommend what students could be interested in and so on. And then the past people said, um, if you would like uh, do accessibility features not from websites, not for the people, you you have to do it for Google <laughs> to have a better search result. And I think it's it's the same in, in, in this case. You have a lot of information in a, let's say, two screen video 
with annotation, with um, slides, with the uh, lecturer. And uh, to, to cope with this information, it is hard for so-called normal people. And um, it's, it's harder for uh, people with, with disabilities, with um, yeah, visual impairments or hearing impairments. And so to make really this, uh, this information that we have on the slides or in the voice in the speech, um, digital could help a lot of because it's searchable and you can uh, yeah, um, match things. And so to, to make this, uh, this content accessible and digital is a step forward, I think, for accessibility, but also for other indexing things. Yeah. Okay, I guess. Maybe to, last, go maybe to put this in a slightly different direction for the last couple of minutes. And this is me speaking, especially from a perspective of someone who actually uses a lot of accessibility features because I have a very, very bad eyesight. So uh, I, I do use actually Zoom functionality for, for desktops and things like that. Uh, and one of the really important things that people sometimes forget is that uh, having a good usability is actually kind of the most important thing for accessibility because if it behaves like you expect and you don't have to search for, for buttons and, and things like that, that makes uh, things a lot easier. And we talked a lot about uh, special features for uh, accessibility right now. Um, but uh, having just a clean UI and, and things like that already helps so much uh, and, and that could also be something. So if you have feedback on, um, I don't know, uh, people having normal people without disabilities having problems, uh, um, I don't know, with the usability of some of the open cost tools, getting feedback for that would, I think, also be extremely helpful because you can basically bet that if they have problems with that, that then someone with a disability definitely has some problems with that. And as you are speaking, Lars, I guess we can now shift over to your next presentation. <laughs> 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 directly. Thank you, Clemens, for uh, facilitating this discussion. Thank you.